an organization in Hamburg, uh, Germany called DAISY. And uh, Volker, you're going to say that in German for me. What is it? Deutsche Elektronen Synchrotron. In other words, the German Electron Synchrotron Research right. Laboratory, correct? Right. All right. During that time, he first serves as, as the coordinator of what's called the VUV and XUV experiments uh, at the Synchrotron Radiation Lab in what's called Lab, and then as deputy director of Lab from 1985 to 1989. I met Dr. Zyla probably in the 88 time frame and then um, had the pleasure of flying to Hamburg uh, with the chancellor at Louisiana State University and we met in a uh, dinner, uh, a restaurant slash uh, bar in Hamburg and offered you a job to become the founding director of the J. Bennett Johnston Senior Center for Advanced Microstructures and Devices in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He accepted that position, packed his family up, and moved to South Louisiana from Hamburg, Germany. Uh, he has also held positions, uh, and he was there from 89 until 98. He's also held positions of uh, professor of physics and professor of electrical and computer engineering at LSU and during that same period. Since 1998, he has been professor of microstructure technology in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Karlsruhe. And he serves as the director of the Institute for Microstructure Technology, also in Karlsruhe. Additionally, he's been the managing director of something called ANCA, which he can explain from 98 to 2004. He currently serves various committees uh, 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 across the, the entire world, uh, America, Asia, and Australia. Uh, on a professional note, he I won't use the word unique because it's a dangerous word to use. To use the word unique implies one, and there may be others out there. But let me say this with certainty: he is truly a rare person in his ability to bridge physics, where his formal training is, to technology, and. That is where he currently serves, as I said, in the Department of Mechanical Engineering and Business. He's unique in that ability to, to contribute squarely to each of those fields, which to many are complex enough individually that you can be one, but never two, and certainly never three. This man is all three, which is the reason on a professional basis that I ask him to join us because in this course called Science, Technology, and Us, the us implying the contribution of science and technology to business and society, you, we needed to hear from people who were able to connect all three. Volker, as a professional, as a businessman, as an engineer, and as a societist, has certainly done it. As a person, um, we've been through a lot. Uh, there's not a dearer friend in the world than Folker and his wife, Kristen. So it's a pleasure to welcome you here today. We have, for the benefit of the audience, and uh, just to recap, he and I have been communicating since about 10 minutes after 5 this morning via email and uh, one long distance telephone call. So he knows our format uh, and uh, we'll give it a try. Dr. Zyla, welcome to Lebanon, Tennessee. And by the way, gang, he's been here uh, about, what was it, 9 or 10 months ago? A year yeah, ago? It was in, I think it was uh, October last year. All right. October last year. Lois and I got a phone call 
And this guy with his curiously German accent said, Harville, this is Volker. And I said, where are you in Germany? He said, no, am I, I'm at the intersection between I-40 and, uh, and uh, South Cumberland Drive. Uh, we come to see you. We'll be there in five minutes. They were in the U.S. doing something they had never done, although they lived here. Uh, they didn't get, <laughs> life gets in the way, does it? They didn't get to be tourists. Their son lives in um, Berkeley, uh, California. Their daughter is a vet in, uh, in Auburn, Alabama. And they decided to come visit us in Lebanon. So uh, welcome back to Cumberland. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. And uh, if anybody has any questions in the team, I'm going to see, help me, ask me to be louder, and so on and so forth. This is a kind of formal uh, meeting here. Uh, my my goal is that those who came here this early afternoon tonight have some fun. And having some fun also learn something. That's what I'm going to try to uh, tell you the next well, uh, three quarters of an hour. Okay? Okay. 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 Then let's simply start. And what I want to show the audience is the first slide. All right. We have the slide with an ant on the screen right now. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at this ant, I tell you it is a German ant. It doesn't smile at <laughs> it's a German ant, uh, and a German ant is naturally small because it's so cold. And this German ant holds in its hand a little ear. This was in the 19th, and it took everybody by surprise. Can you make real ears that small? Yes, you can make these ears that small. Okay, Volker. Volker, now let me interrupt because I want it clear. I'm watching sure. the students. First question. Am I correct? That is a scanning electron micrograph of a right. real ant. Right. All right. And secondly, that is a real ear on that ant's finger. And third, it's not done using Photoshop. You right. actually placed that ear on the ant's finger and took a picture. Correct? Yes. And I tell you the full